Thanks. Wow, it's really hard to follow that one. <laughs> but how's everybody doing today? Awesome! Those are the sparks I'm looking for. And please calm down a little bit. We don't want to set up the uh, fire alarm, you know. <laughs> so, yup. Here we go. So a little bit about myself. I was born in China, and I, was, um, I spent the first 20 years of my life growing up over there. In 2007, I went to a college in Wuhan, China. And over there, I was looking around and exploring options in life that I could pursue. In 2009, I decided I need to make a change. And I was fortunate enough to be accepted to one of the finest schools in the world, the Ohio State University. And, and that's how I moved to America. Why America? Well, there were a lot of reasons, but the main reason was that I was impressed by the dynamics and energy in the community, such as OSU. And in fact, to a large part, this land of dream kind of helped me become who I am. And in the following seven minutes, I would like to share two stories that helped me define who I am. The first story is about how I missed a bow. Almost two years ago, my friend Mike was selling his Xbox on Craigslist. The, cra the Xbox was in great condition. And an hour after he posted, a guy emailed him and offered him 150 bucks for it. Mike was, with, Mike was very happy and told the guy to pick it up. So the next day, the buyer showed up and was ready to complete the deal but he forgot to bring cash. Well, it was an honest rookie mistake not to bring cash, but at that time, there were no way Mike could accept credit card payment. So of course, both of them were disappointed and they had to cancel the deal. That experience inspired Mike. So he and I were talking during lunch. So we were thinking, what if we can build a service that enables individuals to accept credit card payment at that time, a lot of our friends had already had a smartphone. So we were like, hey, we could build a portable credit card reader and an app that can process a transaction. And bam, problem solved. We spent about an hour talking back and forth. And we definitely believe this idea has a really good potential. So anyway, we came up with this great, great idea at lunch. But after that, Neither of us has done anything to make it happen. We kind of just let the idea sit there and forgot about it. Why? Here's why. First of all, neither of us knew, neither of us knew programming. <laughs> Secondly, neither of, neither of us knew any programmers in person. And most importantly, both of us have classes to keep ourselves busy. So, we kind of just let all these reasons not to do it paralyze us. I am sure when it comes to things like this, you all have your own list. But guess what? A year later, a very similar product just went viral. It's called Square and turns a smartphone into a credit card reader. It was so popular that even the guy at the farmer's market was swiping my credit card on his iPhone. So Square was launched in 2010. And it was around the same time Mike and I were talking about a similar concept. So technically, if he and I had done anything to build the product, we could have become this square today. But we never did. We have never done anything to catch a spark <laughs> or turn the idea into action. Well, in that scenario, even a great idea is just an idea. The second story is about how I caught the boat. Last December, a friend of mine from China was applying for a graduate program in an English-speaking country. As part of the application process, she was required to write a personal statement that, st that describes her strength and the reason she chose the program. She's very smart and hardworking, and in fact, she possesses almost all the great qualities that I believe. There was no reason the school should deny her. But there was one problem. 
she had never been trained to write essay or paper in English. So technically, she had to start from zero and teach herself how to compose a beautiful essay. Well, honestly, it was not a pleasant experience at all. <laughs> but luckily, she's friend with me. So she, <laughs> she emailed me and offered me 80 bucks to find a native English speaker to proofread her essay. So I turned to the same friend, Mike, because he's a good writer. So he took on the task, and he corrected some grammar mistakes. And he also restructured some sentences to make them sound better. After the job is done, I paid Mike $60, and I kept $20. <laughs> that $20 was the easiest money I have ever made. So that makes me wonder, I could turn this into a real business. Well, there were hundreds of thousands of Chinese students who had encountered the same problem as my friend, and they all need such help. What if I build a service that connects these international school applicants to the America who are good at writing, and I could take a cut from the transaction? <laughs> well, I was very excited, and I Skyped my dad and told him about the idea. I was expecting some compliment, but what I got was discouragement. My dad told me that there were already established agencies that are tackling the problem. They have huge marketing budget and a lot of talents working for them. In fact, the competition in the industry was so intense that he didn't believe that I had a chance against the big players. So I was in a dilemma. On one hand, I would face huge competition if I ever start up. As a college student, I don't have a lot of knowledge or experience in business operations. Neither am I blessed with a pile of money. <laughs> well, the world is so big that I was so scared that I, I don't know how to tackle it. But on the other hand, that $20 was the easiest money I have ever made. And that must mean something. Guess what? This time, I decided to take on the challenge. I named the company Drafting. And I called my friend from China and promised her that I would pay her $6 for every client she brought me. She was very happy, and she took on the offer. And now, two months after launching the business, I am serving customer number six. And I'm also looking to triple my operation by next month. Looking back, if I had ever been intimidated by the advice and just let the idea go, I would, I would never reach where I am today. I am very happy to prove my dad wrong, and for the record, so is he. <laughs> so now I would like to ask all of you a question. When a spark hits, are you going to be a crowd of voices or a crowd of hands? Please take a minute and think. At school, have you ever, had a, have you ever wanted to ask a professor a question, but you never did, and then the problem showed up in the exam? Or you have ever had a crush on a girl, but you never had the guts to ask her out? <laughs> or finally, have you ever had a brilliant business idea, but you have never done anything to make it happen? I am a small entrepreneur. I don't know what would happen with my business the next day. And that is the case of most entrepreneurs. We probably don't have a lot of money, and we don't have a lot of experience in the industry. Yes. Ignorance can handicap us, and fear can paralyze us. But no matter what, we still take actions. We take small steps every day that could eventually turn into a giant leap. I am just a regular guy from another country. If I can do it, you, you all can do it. Everyone, please, when a spark hits, you must take action to catch it. Don't let it go. Don't just think too much about what would happen afterwards. Don't waste time. Just talk about it. Screw it. Let's do it. Who's with me? Now, now at the very end, I would like to challenge you, all of you, to stop talking and start doing. Thank you.